Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Today we're mounting a corn picker on our 686 International tractor. Uh, we thought we'd go in depth and show you the process of how we do it and talk a little bit about um, the different tractors that can go on and the specific model that we have. And we're just gonna show you the process. We think it's, you know, it's, it's a it's a really unique process. There's not a lot of people that do it anymore. So we thought we'd make a video about it. So here we have the different uh the different types of units and all the different tractors that can be put on. And there's dozens of different tractors that can be put on between John Deere, Alice Chalmers, International, Oliver, and, and most of the tractors that were built in the 60s and into the 70s. So we got a, a 319 uh, mounted uh, front with the, for the snapping. And then we have a, a 322 12 row husking bed that we have with our picker and they also come in a sheller and a, a grinder and a eight row which was one of the early models so so we're just going to illustrate that this this picker can be mounted on any one of these tractors a straight m super mta the oliver and the 686 and i have a mount that would that's all set up for this oliver before we had the 686 and we ended up getting another picker for for uh uh, so that I get, I can either go either way, which the diesel is always better. It runs a lot cooler. So let's go to the mount here um, to show that these mounts got. There's probably 50 different adjustments to adjust for whatever brand tractor. Usually these are changed out from depending on the type of tractor. You got lots of adjustments in here, um, and then on your drive chains and your drawbar and everything is able to be slid or moved in whatever direction and then once you got that all set up it's usually um, quite simple to get it on. So today we'll be adjusting this tractor for for the mount so first of all we'd have to take off the weights, the weight bracket, the steps, the fenders, three-point hitch and um, clean it up uh, make sure our oil has been changed and, and check all our fluid levels, uh, blow out our air filter, um, just do it all around, check around tires so that um, it's always quite difficult to do maintenance once this thing is mounted. Okay, so here's uh, some of the accessories we have to put on. We have this shroud that came off of, uh, I think like a 460 or something. I had to do a little modifying to get it to fit the front of our tractor. Most of it's quite similar, but that just keeps all the, the dust and leaves and everything out from plugging your radiator, which is probably one of the more important parts. Now, we got these guides on here. They go on the front here with a weight bracket mount and they will keep the picker from rubbing up against the frame of the tractor and damaging things that way. Keeps everything centered real nice. There's adjustments in them for that. We have these shrouds with one for each side. These again came off a 460 head that do a little adjusting. Keep the leaves and other things from getting to the motor to keep it from catching fire. Um, some guys will even carry like a fire extinguisher with them, just like a combine. And then we got this this sprocket that goes on your PTO drive line, and uh, again, there's a couple different adjustments too, depending on what model tractor you're using. widen the wheels out in a certain way. 
we have to make sure that our wheel width is, I think, 70 inches. Any narrower than that um, will rub the frame. So you want to be as narrow as you can so that you're not knocking down more corn. We got 38 inch rows, and um, sometimes if the corn isn't planted just right, we're running a little, little down. Try to keep that narrow. All right, we got the 686 tore apart. We got all the, you know, all the stuff off of it. We got the fenders off of it. We got the steps off of it. We got the front weights off of it. Dad checked all the fluids on it. Checked tire pressure. Here's our pile of goodies. Took the three point off the back and uh, the shroud. Should be uh, ready to clean up and then we'll come back and start slapping on uh, parts for the picker. Tractor cleaned up. We're gonna gotta get this mount on, on top of the axles and everything fastened down. It's possible to do it with one person. It's just easier to have help. And
right, so we got our subframe on and our mounting brackets. Uh, we got all our shields on. I think we're ready to go down to our other shed where the actual picker is and uh, mount it up. two mounted pickers here. One I bought back in 89 down at Wamity for $325 on an auction. And the other one I got from a neighbor, which was probably one of the last ones built, which was um, very well cared for besides. So, and then we've actually have other ones we have for parts. Uh, and they got to the point where you could get them virtually for nothing. They're not worth anything for dollars only to us. Um, pretty much iron price, but they're very cheap harvesting. So we're gonna mount we're gonna mount this one um, It's got a side hill hitch that was added to it um, for side hills and in um, There's some other things that uh, work better than the other one. So um, We're gonna grease it up and get started We try to line up those two sprockets right there, and that tells us we're real close to where we be. And then we get a a punch to stick through these holes. This hole here to help line up a little closer. Put these pins in, and the key is to have everything lined up now. A lot of guys back in the day used to pour a slab of concrete in their shed in the corner somewhere so that everything was level and flat. So when you backed in with your tractor, everything adjusted right on nice. Uh, you can really fight with these things if everything isn't lined up right. So we learned to take them off right so that when we're putting them back on, we, we don't have so much problems. Now I've mounted a corn picker every year since 1980 with my dad and then my own here and and the only other person I know that's doing this yet is my brother on the home farm he still picks dry corn too like this otherwise I don't know anyone else that mounts a picker anymore some guys will leave them on the tractor from year to year which that's not so great because the mice like to move in and chew up all your wiring and everything because you have so much dirt and stuff so you can clean up everything and then it helps you figure out if there's anything that's not right and most of the time we're in greasing or mounting or dismounting i see if there's any problems so the last thing you want to have is a problem on this thing out in the field somewhere so we try to prevent everything we possibly can to make it more nice when you're using it so we got that on. Now the cob elevator rods, which are these, which mount again over here. And then there's a bracket back there that holds that cob elevator up. Keeps everything steady until you get this mounted that it's just a, like a simple jack type system. Try to mount it on a sunnier day. You got plenty of light. Okay, so back here I'll be pulling out the, the cob elevator um, stand. And it's basically just some pins that help hold it from tipping over when it's not mounted.
now that we got that out of the way, we uh, can start working on this front, greasing it up, looking it over. So here we got our gathering chains inside and those are pretty much your main ones. There's a couple smaller ones on the other side that we can adjust later. But like in here, it's a lot easier to get into all this stuff before it's put on. Now really the bigger downside to operating one of these pickers is, one is the noise, which you can use your protection, but the dust. And it depends on the crop conditions. Some years it's not nearly so bad as others. Um, but we don't pick that much corn. We maybe pick about 4,000 bushel. Um, takes us probably about three, three and a half days if things go right. And it's mostly number 60 chains. There's certain ones that'll go be problems more than others. Like this one probably could be either replaced or tightened a little bit. We'll work on that before we put it on. And um, now in here, this is an extension they put on for the newer, bigger tractors that came out then. For, for instance, a straight M, I wouldn't need this. Maybe an MTA, I wouldn't need it neither. Um, because uh, you need more room for your front wheels and things in here. So this here bar and then this here ends up being an extra something depending on the type of tractor you have. And it's always better to have a little more room up there so you can get in there and clean out the radiator if it needs to be. We're thinking these, these pickers are uh, built like, I think they came out in the late 60s and International made one. There's probably several others, but new ideas seem to be the the more dominant one that seemed that everybody started to hang on to and to use. And this was right before the combines got very popular. So back in the, the first one I've ever seen was in 1980. And before that we had a Woods Brothers one row corn picker where we had to husk out the first two rounds around all these little five, 10 acre fields. Um, so we wouldn't have to drive it down and uh, it worked it just slower and things like that. So this here, it, is good for opening up fields. Some guys would even open up for like for corn silage. They would, they used to go around with one of these and then run all them cobs through their chopper afterwards because it was still green yet, but it would pick it. So you didn't have to run it all down and lose so much in the field that way. They came with some nice fancy chain originally, but I imagine through the years that got tore off from the corn stalks and whatnot. Now we got these, which slide onto here. Now there's a bolt in the middle, and if we do this right, we don't we, we don't have to take that out. If we we have to be helping them on as we go. There's one of those for each side. basically in like a saddle. This is the pivot point. And after we get home, we will recheck these to make sure that we're, we're in there the way we need to be. There, now, down in. There we go, and we snug up our plates again. Usually the second one goes in a little easier than the first one. It just helps line everything up a little bit more. And just having these machines in the shed 
lots of grease and oil on them. Keeps all your your bolts and nuts and anything that's got to be wrenched or has to move just that much nicer and looser to work with. You maybe get a little greasy and oily, but that's easier than fighting with the rust. Now these here is a little bit, we ain't gonna get down in the dirt, but again, as long as everything is real close, sometimes we use like a punch or something to help line up the cylinder. And what we do is we put our hydraulics on float so that you're pushing the oil out of the cylinder if you need to, to get your pinholes lined up and use the punch to, to do that. And there we go. <laughs> Him in there. And these are the kind of things you don't want to lose in the cornfield. Trying to find it like a needle in a haystack. So there we go. There's really no, not much to adjust there because it's a very short chain. Now these things with the machine, they're quite simple. holes are they line up with your pin out here so when you can't see them you can feel for them or you kind of know where they belong and you have your key in back here so that it doesn't get dragged out by the corn stalks as you're driving along now this is something interesting for like a side hill like opening a field um, a guy made this um, this isn't something that was bought it was modified where he could pull a pin and back up and, and get it to jump in over there, over here, or in the center, which normally you just have this part here going on, under the machine. So that's kind of a nice feature. It's uh, you know, all done by a farmer. And um, here we get our rope pull for our pin. A little some modifications. tools and head back to the shop and and uh, maybe a little greasing and a few other little adjustments other than that we're pretty much ready to pick corn as you can see the hardest part was probably getting everything to line up and uh, slide into place like those cylinders and the shafts and then those uh, those big brackets but uh, anyways it went pretty well with extra help I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video and uh, make sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos